I really want to provide something that I feel like, you know, that person looks like me on, on camera. That That's little kids look up and say, you know, that's, that's what I want to do. And the funny thing, my son had a uh, project do uh, two weeks ago and he said, daddy, I want to, I got a project where I build my own business. I said, all right, well, what, what do you want to do? He said, I want to start a keep kids. And that just blew my mind. And he's like, I want to sell supplements. I want to, like, he wants to do what I'm doing. And um, that's great because it's like, I got one, how do I get two? Welcome to this episode of Black Business Leaders. My name is Thomas Hargos, and today we're sitting down with Daryl Patterson. Daryl, thank you for joining us. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Daryl, you're a serial entrepreneur. You're in the fitness and health and wellness space. Uh, you've th helped thousands of people throughout your journey, uh, but catch us up to speed for those who don't know about you. What is it that you do and maybe what you've accomplished? So I'm the uh, owner of an online fitness business called Heat Extreme. Uh, and on, on that platform, I also have a supplement company and a uh, monthly, well, actually, we're changing it to a monthly challenge uh, called the Heat Challenge, where I give away um, five winners. At this point, five winners win $5,000 a piece. And uh, going into 2021, we're actually moving it to a 30 day challenge and giving away a grand total of $200,000 to $150,000. Uh, in a year or so. Um, I own a supplement company, uh, started a, a clothing business as well that will be launching in 2021, supplement line, um, and then an online uh, program for people all across the world. Um, and how many folks do you think that you've helped out throughout the process? Uh, we, we literally just crossed over a million people um, a few months ago. The pandemic kind of like took us over that hump. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, that's uh, everybody's stuck at home and they need to stay in shape. There's that quarantine Absolutely. 15, right? All right. I call it the COVID 20. COVID 20. <laughs> there we go. So that's where you're at now. But uh, take us back to this start because obviously you're, you're, you're wildly successful now. But was it always like that in the beginning? If you could talk to us a little bit about your childhood, maybe um, where you were brought up. Um, I was born in Cleveland, Ohio. Uh, to my parents, uh, Crystal and Daryl Patterson. And um, I played sports literally all my life. Um, I thought that, you know, the only thing I wanted to do when I was growing up was play basketball. That's what I thought I was going to do when I became an adult. And, you know, when I grew up, for, for lack of better word. And um, I went on to play high school basketball and college basketball as a Division II All-American um, academically and on the court. And um, I ended up graduating from the University of Finley with two degrees in four years. So I have a degree in uh, technology management and a degree in sales and retail marketing. And um, from there, I went on to uh, land a career at Lowe's Distribution Center. I started at the, I, I, well, I enrolled in a uh, management program. So pretty much started at a supervisor level. And they trained us in all aspects of the business. The goal was for us to move up to be uh, GMs of the distribution center. And um, worked my way up and I was an operations manager. The next level would have been, two more levels would have been GM. And um, ended up getting fired from there uh, after eight years of work and went over to Home Depot which I thought would be uh, the same type of feel, background, atmosphere, and I hated it and ended up getting fired from there. And um, I started to uh, start to train. And uh, it wasn't a, the funny thing about it, it wasn't something that I set out to do. Uh, like training wasn't on the radar at all. I absolutely knew nothing about the training field. I knew there was trainers. I worked with trainers playing basketball. I just never took an interest in, you know, I want to be like that guy. And um, got fired from a job. And my son was born in April of 2013. I lost my job in October of 2012. So I uh, was scared to go home at the time to tell uh, my wife that, 
you know, I didn't have a job. I was a breadwinner and I uh, went to the gym. A young lady walked up to me and she asked me, uh, could I train her? Cause she seen I would work out with people before, but what she didn't know was just a group of us working out. Like mm-hmm. just amazing friends in the gym. We all work out at the same time. So ended up training her. Um, funny catch of this story was when I asked her, what was her, uh, what could she afford? She said $30. I'm like, okay, cool. $30 an hour is pretty good. She's like, no, $30 a week. And, um, I had nothing else to do, took the, took the job. And one thing led to another. I started training her, she got results. Her friends started picking up, they started spreading the word. And then later on down the line, I started doing these flying pushups that were, uh, I was known for earlier or earlier on in uh, social media. And I started doing partner workouts that a lot of people knew me for. So my following started to spread. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, I'm, started training Portia Williams from the Housewives of Atlanta. And she was my first client in Atlanta. So I lived in Valdosta, Georgia. Atlanta is three hours up north. I would drive up there on the weekends, train her and drive back down on and on Sundays and get back to training my clients. And that's pretty much how it, it started, you know? And um, I ended up moving up to Atlanta uh, towards the end of, or summertime of, uh, 2013, 2014, uh, two, two, 2013 is when I kind of moved to Atlanta and then that's everything took place from there. Awesome. So you really pretty much just seized the opportunity and you ran with it. Sound pretty right. much. With the first <laughs> Cool. So I want to, um, dig a bit back into uh, a little bit more about your upbringing. So, uh, you, you grew up with both your parents in the household, right? Mm-hmm. Well, okay. up until I was uh, 12. Up until you were 12, then they probably they split or something. Yeah. Okay. And um, were your parents in business at all? Uh, no. No? I do not come from a... Uh, no. <laughs> not at all. You, you said you were playing sports growing up. You played basketball, then played at the collegiate level. Um, what was that like when you realized that, you you know, basketball may not be what you may be doing in your future like how did that moment feel for you well so this this is the funny thing i actually i knew i wasn't gonna make the nba that that was pretty much clear uh when i got into college uh especially after my freshman year um what happened was i actually had a chance to go overseas and i ended up breaking my hand a week before my tryout and um I had to make a decision. I said, do I want to pursue, you know, chasing this basketball dream or do I just want to go ahead and start my life in the working field? And I knew I didn't want to go overseas because I didn't want to be around a bunch of people I didn't know, especially people who didn't speak English. Mm -hmm. And I just didn't want to commit to that type of lifestyle, just kind of be by myself. So I made the decision to go ahead and put my focuses on uh, school and graduating. That's why I said I ended up graduating with two degrees. At my last year, you know, I loaded up my credit hours and um, got my degrees and got out and just really focused on um, what I wanted to do in life. And, um, you know, I, I kind of kissed the dream of basketball goodbye, but I still play. That, that was the thing. I still played in summer leagues. People still called me for different tournaments and things like that. So, I still played the game of basketball. I just knew it wasn't going to be uh, something I would get paid for at this point. <laughs> when you, uh, when you, you know, injured your hand and then you went the corporate route, uh, what was that moment though, after working for, you said both two, um, two companies in the home improvement space, uh, what was that moment for you uh, where you decided like, this isn't for me? I know you said uh, you got let go from both, but mm-hmm. when did you decide like, I gotta go into business, I gotta do something for myself? That moment, that, that, that last conversation um, with the GM at Home Depot, because it was a reality check for me. And, you know, I had, they knew I, I had a child on the way, you know, and I'm like, you know, I got a, a kid on the way and what you guys are terminating me for um, isn't really uh, that serious. You know, and if I was really going to detail, I would say 99.9% of people would probably say the same thing. Mm-hmm. But um, it was at that point, you know, when I 
knew I had another mouth to feed in the next couple of months. I just would never put uh, my life, my career, my future in anybody else's hand. So at that point, I just made a decision. Whatever I'm going to do is, is going to be under my terms, my regulations, and on my time. And that decision has paid off. So, yeah. Big time. So, um, and if you could actually just maybe give the uh, audience uh, an idea of um, what you're able to do for yourself, like maybe um, some of the experiences you've been able to have because you're a business owner, uh, some of the people you've been able to help because you're in a position to do so. Uh, what are some of those things that business ownership has afforded you? Uh, just, just a lot of different things. Um, when I was running a gym, just being able to host different events for the community, um, being able to just network with different business owners. And, and a lot of it's just being in the right place at the right time. I'm very active in the community. I'm a part of 100 Black Men. I'm also a Prince Hall Mason. Um, so I'm very active. I've always stayed active in the community and always seeking to you know, connect and network with different people. So being a business owner, also gives me leverage to do just a lot of things that me personally, I want to do um, host classes that I want to host and um, just help people because I don't necessarily have to ask anybody, oh, can I do this? It's if I want to do it, if I feel the need to do it, if I feel there's a calling for it and the, the need is there and I can provide it, um, I'm just in that position to be able to do it. And uh, it's funny because my dad, you know, he'll, come down and visit and ask me, what well, do you have time? And I said, dad, I make my own schedule, you know, at this point, like I can take off the whole week if I want to, but I just, you know, I'm in that position to where I don't have to clock in. Um, you know, everything that I do is, is pretty much on a, on a schedule. And as long as I schedule out my days and, and plan accordingly, then uh, all my business continue to, to flourish. That's awesome. So you got financial time freedom, a bunch of those those benefits that come along with being your own, being your own man. So um, there's people online who talk about entrepreneurship not being for everyone. But what are your thoughts about that? Like, um, do you think anyone can become a business owner? Um, I think anybody can become a business owner. Yes, because it's 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 a job at the end of the day. Now, is it for everybody? Absolutely not. Um, and. I started to learn this more and more um, as the years progressed. I would work with people, um, literally, I would work with people who would help manage and run somebody else's business, but they would not want to do that for themselves. And that's kind of like, a, like, wow, you would really help catapult this person's business, but you can do this for yourself and actually make more money, but you would rather assist with somebody else. Why so, do you think that is, by the way? I don't want to know that, <laughs> <laughs> you know, so, some things I just don't want to know because I don't want to understand that. I don't even want to fall in that, in that position. But I, I just think that, you know, some people may be more comfortable, you know, working and reporting to some people. Um, most entrepreneurs are kind of self doers, go getters. Um, they don't really need a somebody behind them, pushing them. Um, they kind of are self motivated. Some people need some type of motivation. Somebody needs somebody to push them. Somebody needs somebody in their ear telling them that, that, they're, that they're doing good. Um, and then, you know, most entrepreneurs, they're, they're just, they're go-getters. You know, if they fail, then they're always going to look for a way to get back up. They're always going to look for a way to rebound and, um, you know, revamp whatever it is that caused them to fail. Um, everybody's not built for running a business. And, that's perfectly fine. You know, there, there's mm. nothing wrong with that whatsoever. You know, if you want to flourish and being the best manager in the world, then be the best manager in the world. If you want to flourish and being the best owner in the world, then be the best owner in the world. If you want to be the best janitor in the world, be the best janitor in the world. Whatever makes you uh, feel whole and a part of whatever team that you're that you're on, and you're playing your role to make sure that that, that company, that team flourishes, and you're happy with that. You know, I have all respect for everybody on all, on all aspects of uh, the platform because everybody plays a very important part, you know, and, if, and I say this all the time, if everybody operates as a Michael Jordan in their perspective area, then that company, that, pink, that team, that business will continue to elevate. 
That makes sense. So basically what I'm hearing is everyone can do it, but not everyone will. Right. Got it. So um, now back to you, you getting started in personal training, uh, you mentioned like it happening out of necessity because you just had a child on, or you were having a child on the way and you needed to be able to provide. So you just rose to the occasion and you, you, you got a, you got a client that way. So can you take us from um, like through how you grew your business? You said you get, you had Porsche, you were driving about 30 minutes to get to this client who was paying you 30 three hours, oh, th three hours. That's yeah. worse. <laughs> <laughs> you worse. So why did you do that? First of all, what was your thought process to, to even do something like that? So Porsche was literally my first uh, client in Atlanta. And my goal before I even started working. Uh, for who is that, by the way? Who, who is Porsche, Porsche for people who may not know? Uh, Portia Williams is uh, from the Housewives of Atlanta. She's one of the house, well, one of the wives on Housewives of Atlanta. But um, it was an opportunity uh, to work with a celebrity for one. It was an opportunity to get my name out there to a broader audience. And um, I just took the opportunity, you know. And the funny thing was the agreement that we had at that point in time, um, I wasn't charging her for training. But what I was at, what I did ask for in return was to showcase the training that I was doing with her so I can bring in, you know, people to, you know, that had an interest in what I was doing. So from that point was really the start of me growing my online business. And what I explained to a lot of trainers that, you know, are possibly working with celebrities and things like that. If you're not charging these people, then it has to work in your favor or you're wasting your time. You know, just saying I train a celebrity, that's it's great, but if it's not turning revenue for you, um, then I'm really not quite sure what the brag and the boasting is about. So every time she would post, I would post, you know, I had something about my online business. And this is when I started building my online business, whether it was a a nutrition plan she posted the first thing somebody would see if they come to my my page was ten dollar meal plan or hundred dollar uh program or 25 it was always something uh showing on my page when she would post that i offer something online where i can reach the mad uh the masses and now uh, that's kind of how everything pretty much started you know that was what got the ball rolling so you bartered for marketing services. I think that's really clever. Not necessarily everyone does that. So right. is, was that something you read in a book or that was just something that, you know, intuition told you this I should do? No, it wasn't anything I read in the book. And like, like I say, I, I come from a, a marketing standpoint. So one thing that I knew in the back of my head was social media was a free marketing um, platform. And if somebody tagged me, that means people were going to come over to see what I was doing. So it's like, okay, if people are going to come to see what I was what I was doing, do I want to impress them with my workouts, or do I want to capture an, an opportunity to uh, sell sell to them? And it was, you know, I was, and like I said, I was in the mindset of just had a son, need to make money, and my mindset was, how do I make money doing what I'm doing now? Because whatever I whatever I do now has to work. And uh, that was it. It was like, you know, show them that you offer things that people can buy online. They don't have to be in the city to work with you. You can work with them on the internet. And um, that's what pretty much got the ball rolling. Mm. Now, as far as knowing to uh, get started online, first of all, how, how many years back was that? Seven. Oh, so you were one of like the the first people to start doing something like that then. Yeah. So where did you come up with that idea though to to do something online so that you could serve people, you know, nationwide? So I'm I'm actually because there there's a time frame in there that's kind of great. I'm kinda of not sure exactly how it was, but mm -hmm. um I also had a friend or have a friend now named the guru of ads, Deshaun Johnson. And he's also up here in Atlanta. And I met him and Portia at the same time, same day, same time, same place. And uh, we ended up partnering together because there was this company called Trainers Vault who wanted to 
start something of like an online business or you can find, actually it was you can find trainers in your area so that was their thing it was a app where you could find trainers in your respective areas so you can actually work with them uh one-on-one -on -one. we met in miami we sat down and me and Deshaun were like you know what how about we do a online program where we because he was the guy was trying to figure out how do i find people we were trying to figure out how do we get our names out when we had two different approaches we sat down we talked and we said hey how about we do an online program we're going to charge one dollar um and it was called 90 days ahead or 60 days ahead or 30 days ahead, something like that and uh we charged a dollar and we had like sixteen thousand people join this program for a dollar and me and Deshaun, when we got done, we looked at each other and we were like, dude, we just made $16,000 online. Let's keep this going. <laughs> you know, and like, what are we doing? Like, we're over here chasing, you know, one-on-ones when we can start really hitting the masses. And that's really what started uh, the online business. And then uh, once we got that going, we kind of said, okay, we're going to start doing our own thing. And that's when we kind of both went on went on our own and respectfully started doing our own thing. That's incredible. Actually, I'm glad you uh, brought that up because that's definitely something that the audience would need to know about is um, you were able to get way more leverage out of that. You you created something uh, and you, you can sell it like pretty much infinite amount of times and it doesn't take any additional time for you to, to create. Right. Uh, it, I mean, I mean, most people are, I, I think when they think about personal training or, or business in general, they think brick and mortar, but uh, that was super cool that you did that. And I think that the opportunity for you came from you just being willing to network with people. You, you got yourself in the right room. You met Portia, you met that gentleman, you got that meeting. And I mean, that's pretty much the power of marketing. I mean, networking as well, right? Exactly. That's awesome. Absolutely. That's awesome. So as far as that goes, so you worked out with Portia. She did a couple of shout outs for you. Um, did you get a lot of clients from that? Oh, yeah. My following, the, her first, so the funny thing was her first announcement, she made it like a big thing. And um, I'm driving to Atlanta and I literally get out the car, walking up to this apartment. That's where I trained her at. And I look at my phone and I got like an additional 5,000 followers. Just, and I literally checked my phone five minutes ago. I get out the car and I'm like, 5,000 followers? Like, what just happened? That's crazy. And then I just, I just said, well, it had to come from her. I go to her page and she put a big post out. And she, the, the day before, she said, hey guys, I'm working with this guy. Um, I'm going to start my fitness journey. I'll let you guys know who it is tomorrow. Like, she did a big announcement. So I'll let you guys know at this time. And before I walked in the gym, she would, you know, she did another post and did like a little video of me. And uh, from there, it just, it took off. Every time she would post something and like my following would grow. Um, I was doing, like I said, partner workouts, flying pushes. So I had so many different other things going on that a lot of people were uh, attracted to. And it just, my following just started growing and growing. And it, it happened very rapidly, very rapidly especially for a guy um you know it, it happened very quickly yeah but i think you attracted those opportunities to yourself i mean you were an early starter you shifted your business online you were right. doing influencer marketing so i mean right place right time doing the right thing absolutely absolutely so why do you think so many other people um who who become personal trainers or who start businesses fail like what kind of mistakes do you think they're making i, I think that they look and, and this is just, you know, my personal opinion. I think some of them look at people like myself and they say, well, I want to do that. Or he makes it look so easy. Or I want to be like that. And not really understand the behind the scenes part of it or why I'm doing it. Like, what's my why? Or like, what? where is my passion coming from? Because it's anybody can have a meal plan. Anybody can be a workout. So anybody, anybody can do these two things. The... The problem is, is my approach to what I do is a lot different than most people would think. As a trainer, 
you would probably think, okay, I'm going to hire this guy. He's going to change my body. He's going to give me these great workouts. He's going to give me this great meal plan. That's probably what you think I'm going to do for you. Okay. That's your, your thought process going in. Little do you know, I'm, that's none of what I'm going to do for you. That's what you're going to do for yourself. I'm just going to uh, apply it. What I'm going to do for you is I'm going to change your mindset. And once I'm able to change the way that you think, the, the way that you process things, the way that you go about things, at that point, my job here is now done. Because going in, you have bad habits that you know, you're know you trying to break. You're thinking about things in a total different manner. So you're not conscious of or cautious of how many calories are on the back of this and how much food you're taking in a day and um, why it's important to get up and work out and do all these things that are what I call a lifestyle. Um, you're just not in that, that mindset, but what you are thinking is something needs to happen. I need to change because I'm not happy with the way that I look. And I know that working out, usually that's what people think. I know if working out and eating right, I'll get to that place. Well, working out and eating right will help you get to that place, but a, a new mindset and a new thought process going for, forward is going to keep you in that place. And that's that's where that's my approach. And I always, you know, you know, like me and my girlfriend talks, and she's like, you know, why you don't think this person's just doing good anymore? And I tell them, I said, it's not really about getting clients is about retaining clients. Like, what are you doing to retain your client? What makes that person want to come back? You know, what are you giving them information? Are you giving them things that they want where they're constantly wanting more? Um, if you're not, then you're going to hit a point in time where that person stops, you know, and then my approach has always been in a business mind mindset. So for me with training, when I would have somebody come in and say that, that they want to train, the first thing I would do is hand them a packet. Tell them, well, before me and you speak, I need, you know, here's a packet. I want you to get up, go over, look at it, and read it. And they'll look like, you know, I thought I just wanted to train and hear some money and say, no, this is actual business. I want you to read over the guidelines. There's, uh, I do automatic withdrawals. Uh, if you're late, there's a penalty. Uh, like it was very detailed, you know, and, the, the consumer or the client would actually take a step away and be like, wow, this guy really takes this stuff serious. And that just separates you, you know, in the conversations I have during that interview or during that uh, consultation lets them know that this that I'm serious. You know, I'm asking specific questions. Have you ever been on a meal plan? Yes or no? No. Uh, if not, or if you have, what caused you to fail? Like I'm asking questions because if you're going to pay me this money, then I'm going to have an expectation from you as well. Just like you have an expectation from me and you're expecting me to give you a hundred percent on the back end, I'm expecting you to give me your hundred percent as well. So once we sign this agreement, we've now committed to this contract to make sure you get to that next level. And we both have to do our part in order for this to work. Definitely. You know, one thing that I really liked that you said uh, a moment ago was that one of the things that differentiates you is that you help change people's minds, their mindset. Right. And what I was curious about was, was there a moment where you felt like maybe your mindset wasn't right? And if there was, what did you do to, to correct that? And so, yes. Um, and, and I tell people all the time, I'm no different from anybody else. I put my shoes on one shoe at a time, underwear on one leg at a time. Uh, I experience the same things that the next man or woman experiences. The difference is I know what I'm going for. I know what I want. And this comes back to a few different things. Me being a prior athlete, I still have a competitive side. Me being an entrepreneur lets you know that I'm still going to, you know, fight whether or not I fail or not. I'm always going to get back up and try to push forward. So those two, those two characteristics were embedded in me um, at a very early age. And now after I have uh, practiced these processes, I've seen the fruits of my labor, I've seen the results. So now I'm able to have a conversation and understand and say certain things that are gonna connect to that client. You know, I understand that you're tired of eating the same foods all the time. Trust me, I've been there, I, I go through that. I understand that you don't wanna get up and, and work out in the morning. Trust me, I get it, I've been there. So I'm the things that I'm saying 
I'm actually hitting on the things that they're usually thinking that, that and that they've been through. And I can talk from a placement of experience. I'm no longer your teacher. I'm your friend next to you in class telling you, I know you're tired, but we still got to study. We still got to pass this test if we want to move on. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that's the best approach to take when it comes to this. You know, and I always tell people I can lead by example um, and I can show you better and I can tell you. You know, and if you do my programs, you literally see me walk this lifestyle with you on a daily basis. It's like you said, you seen I was on the Stairmaster earlier talking to my audience, you know. So as you guys are eating breakfast or watching, you see I'm actually working out telling you, hey, I'm doing this. I'm literally walking this lifestyle with you. You can do it as well. Yeah, leading by example. I love that. And um, now as far as helping you like shape that mindset or that perspective or did you ever have to work on yourself by like maybe looking outside of yourself, maybe reading books, maybe seeking mentorship or um, where did that, some of that personal growth and development come from for you? Um, absolutely. Uh, I, I think the, the biggest personal growth for me came from trial and error. Um, I did not have a mentor in this, in this field. Um, so a lot of the lessons that I learned, a lot of, a lot of the growth that I learned, came from trial and that fair. Um, till this day? I, till this day. Because <laughs> uh, I see what you're doing online and I'm impressed. Uh, everything is professional. It's well done. Um, you know, second to none. Uh, as far right. as your marketing, I, I saw your YouTube ads uh, with the testimonials. So you're, you're definitely doing your stuff right. So I was like, oh man, he must be working with like the best of the best. So that's, that's no, nah, it's, 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 it's trial and error. And, and the funny thing is you start losing a lot of money, you start opening your eyes very quickly and uh, I've lost <laughs> hundreds of thousands of dollars and I tell people this all the time like you know I'm willing to tell people like the do's and don'ts and, and certain things and some stuff there, there's not a book on it um, and some things you kind of you kind of have to you know learn as you go but um, majority of my wisdom um, education my growth has literally came from trial and error whether it's been uh, a physical trial and error. Um, and, and I'll speak on uh, two years ago, I tore my Achilles. And for me, everything that I do, I have to physically be present. And I used to always say at some point in time, I just want to sit down. I want to be this boss that just is able to sit down. Mm. And I felt like that was God telling me, well, here you go, dear. <laughs> sit your butt down you got eight weeks that you can sit down and absolutely try to figure this thing out from the chair and um that was a point in time where i had to figure out how to manage things different how to utilize people different how to put people in the right uh, right areas and right positions so they can blossom they can bloom and the business can bloom and they can grow and the business can grow so a lot of different things happen in my life to where they were, like I said, they were literally just learning lessons. And I always tell people, I tell people all the time, I, I never really lose at anything. I just learn lessons. Those are the only L's that I take in life. Um, and they're, they're sometimes they're costly lessons and uh, sometimes they're not. Uh, the costly lessons you tend to pay a lot more attention to. And um, the other ones you kind of figure out, okay, what do I have to do differently? So this lesson doesn't happen again. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And one of those lessons you learned that I appreciate too is that, I mean, so many people get stuck in analysis paralysis. They, they're getting all this information, whether it's on Instagram or YouTube, they're doing their research. But one of the best things you can do is just get started. And in your right. case, that's what you did. And, you know, experience is the best teacher, apparently. So. Absolutely. Yeah. The, it, the, the best thing you can ever do is, is literally just start. Take the initial step. Everything out, everything from there, you're going to learn. You're, you're going to learn quickly, um, you know, and it, it really just depends on, you know, where you see your business going, the steps that you take to see that that business get into that area. And I always tell people, whatever your goal is, figure out what you're trying, where you're trying to go and then make your steps planning that backward. Reverse so, engineer. Yeah. So here's your goal. What are the things that you have to do to get there and start planning that stuff backwards? And uh, that's how you get to your goals. That's a great way to simplify it. You're right. Um, 
so you've done all of this, but what's, what's motivated you, I guess, what's motivated you in the beginning and what motivates you today? Cause you gotta have, you've gotta have a pretty strong why to, to, to go, go through what you've gone through. Um, one, I just, I, I don't like losing, um, for one, two, I have, um, at, at the point in time I have a, a son that I, I just did not want to say that, you know, your daddy couldn't do this for you. I, I just did not want that to be what came out my mouth. So my son was my uh, motivation for a very long time. I just had a daughter four months ago. So I have two mm-hmm. kids now, which heightens the, uh, the motivation. And especially with a girl, you know, she's about to, she's about to give me hell. <laughs> so, change the game, yeah. <laughs> definitely change the game. So just really, you know, being able to provide for my kids, making sure that I can put them in good schools, making sure um, I'm healthy, you know, to be there and be active. Uh, like with my son, I'm, he's in the basketball and football now, and I'm coaching his team. Like these are things that I want to be a part of. So really just being able to be active, you know, the health side of that plays a huge part in why I do what I do because I don't, you know, getting old and being unhealthy is two different things. You know, I don't have a problem getting old, but I don't want to be old and unhealthy. So, you know, I can get old, but as long as I'm healthy, that means I can move around. That means I'm agile. I can still run and play. Um, and those things inspire me and and really uh, light the fuel to, to keep doing the things that I want to do. And I have fun. Like, this is, it's not a job for me. Like, I literally have fun doing everything that I want to do. And now it's just, what else can I do? Like, what else can I accomplish? What else can I, like, how far can I go with this business? Where can I take? So now it becomes, for me, just an inner competition with myself. Like, okay, girl, let's see if if you made $100,000. How can you, can you make five? You know, can you make a million? And you know, like, can you, can you train a thousand people or can you train them? Like what I'm, I'm always wanting to say, can I go, if I did this, then I can double that. And that that's always been my, my thing. If, if one person do it, that means two or two, that means four or four. It means eight. I should always be able to double what I've done. And I just have to figure that part out. Nice. And what are some of your goals today? Uh, some of my goals today, like I said, I'm starting a new clothing line. Um, I've revamped the, uh, structure of the heat challenge. So uh, before it was an eight week program, I moved it down to a six week program this year. And now I'm going into a monthly program and with a grand finale at the end. And um, I also actually just launched uh, a platform called Heat On Demand, which is um, somewhat similar to Netflix. So, you know, you go home and watch Netflix, everybody watches movies, documentaries. This will be your fitness Netflix, where you, you can watch nutrition videos, or you can get programs, or you can do, get a workout that you want to do. Anything in fitness is going to be on Heat On Demand. It's a, a subscription-based program. And the goal was to make the Heat Extreme name Heat a household name. And... Um, for, and for me to be 100% transparent with you, something for um, for the urban community, for for the culture, because I, I don't I haven't seen that necessarily on my end, and um, I really want to provide something that I feel like you know that person looks like me on on camera. That that's little kids look up and say, you know, that's that's what I want to do. And the funny thing, my son had a uh, project do. Uh, two weeks ago and he said daddy I want to I got a project where I build my own business I said all right well, what do you want to do he said I want to start heat kids and that just blew my mind and he's like I want to sell supplements I want to like he wants to do what I'm doing and um that's great because it's like I got one how do I get two how do I double that up so you know it, it's a it's a great thing that's always been the goal to leave a legacy and uh footprint in the fitness world Mm, love it love it and i love the impact you're already having on your son thinking you know to become a businessman and thinking about ownership right um 
And as far as our community goes, um, I think there ought to be a lot more of that. Um, and you, you know, being visible, that's just gonna, that's just gonna inspire more people. So more power to you for doing that. I've, I've, that's always been in the back of my mind um, to make sure that, you know, I was not necessarily a role model, but just somebody that people could respect and, and say, you know what, that guy is doing really good. I wouldn't mind doing some of the things that he does, or I, I wouldn't mind him being my role model or, or whatever term somebody wants to use. Yeah. And uh, one thing, though, by you being visible and creating all these platforms, you're now becoming that person for someone else. Right. So I appreciate you for doing that and for being visible again. And um, I want our audience to, you know, get a chance to uh, follow you and learn more about what you do. First of all, how can they reach you online? Uh, you can find me online. Uh, Instagram is I am the real DP. Um, heat extreme is H E A T X T R E M E. Heat challenge is H E A T challenge. Heat performance is my supplement line. Uh, seven twenty is my apparel line that's about to launch, and you spell seven S E V Y N, the number two, the number zero, um, and that came from my daughter's. That's her birthday, seven twenty, July twenty. And um, that's the apparel line. Um, everything I just said, you can follow that on Facebook. <laughs> it's like the same names uh, apply ac across all social media platforms. So uh, that's where you guys can find me at. Yeah. Well, Daryl, thank you so much for sitting down with us today and educating us about your business. Um, I appreciate you doing this. I oh, appreciate it. Thanks for having me.